What I do find interesting, and I missed some of this while I was on vacation, and again, press the share button because we're unfortunately being suppressed, and press the like button uh, to get this to more people. I missed while I was on vacation, you know, Beto, Beto mania, Beto O'Rourke, the, you know, he's, he's honestly, I could really compare it to Obama in 2007 and 2008, you know, the Obama mania. Uh, Beto is white, obviously, but it, very, very similar, the parallels, where, you know, this, this charismatic guy, he's so, you know, he sounds like the everyman, and it's very Bobby Kennedy-esque when Bobby ran before he was assassinated. Um, you know, he's standing on cars and talking to the people and all this, and it just really warms your heart. This guy, Beto, you know, he's been painted as the everyman and a super progressive and blah, 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 blah. I did a report uh, on statuscoup.com uh, before the Texas election where he lost by two points, basically pointing out like, hey, I'm sorry, but Beto, you know, he's during the campaign, he's kind of he's doing fundraisers with like major fossil fuel lobbyists. And he's doing fundraisers with, you know, executives at J.P. Morgan and Wall Street, the same executives that destroyed the global economy 10 years ago. Uh, so he might be talking, you know, I'm not going to take money from corporations and this and that, but it doesn't exactly match the record. And he is having fundraisers with the same usual suspects that he's talking like he's going to go against. So it's always follow the money, folks. And I try to do that, whether it's the Democrats, whether it's the Republicans, they're both corrupt. It's, it's, it's very simple. You just follow the money. So while I was gone, uh, apparently more, more journalists are, frankly, starting to wake up because I was calling out this Beto nonsense during the campaign. During the campaign, uh, we, we broke that story at Status Quo about his, lob his fundraisers with uh, lobbyists. Jen, if you don't mind uh, finding that one and putting the link in there for people that didn't read it. So, you know, now more journalists are starting to pay attention and starting to point out like, hey, you know, do a little research. He's not this super, super progressive you think he is. So while I was gone, a, a journalist at the Washington Post, uh, Elizabeth Brunig, Elizabeth Brunig, uh, she's an opinion columnist there. She's fairly progressive. She wrote a piece. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but uh, bottom line, you know, here's the headline. Why this progressive Texan can't get excited about Beto O'Rourke. And she wrote, if only the electric chill in the air were an augur of fast approaching holidays and not the static generated by so many Democrat 2020 presidential candidates. Uh, I'm going to move on. Uh, there's no denying uh, that the O'Rourke campaign accomplished what genuinely accomplished was genuinely impressive. With the help of Bernie Sanders organizers, O'Rourke's team built a grassroots army that put democracy, talking to constituents, listening to the point of view, inviting them to participate in the process, not by mass mail, but by name first. People were genuinely inspired. But in the meantime, though, we have the national election to think about. Uh, uh, and O'Rourke is plainly uninspiring. As Zaid Jelani pointed out at Current Affairs, O'Rourke's congressional voting record signals skepticism about progressive priorities. Quote, while the Democratic base is coalescing around single-payer health care and free college, O'Rourke sponsored neither House bill. During his time in Congress, he never joined the Congressional Progressive Caucus. Instead, O'Rourke is a member of the new Democratic coalition, a centrist caucus, with Clintonian views on health care, education, and trade. Woo! So... You know, this isn't exactly like a scorched earth piece of journalism against Beto. You know, she says, yeah, he, he uh, ran an inspired campaign. He did a lot of grassroots organizing uh, and yada, yada, yada. But, you know, look at his voting record. And for that, woo, boy, did, did she take a lot of heat. I was on vacation, so I didn't really see... Uh, all of this while it was happening in real time. But let's just say, you know, our favorite fake progressive, Neera Tandon, with the Center for, what is it? The Center for American Progress. So more journalists are starting to point out, well, you know, the, the, the actual voting record doesn't particularly match, you know, the progressive platitudes he's putting out there. Uh, now there's a new piece out, which I thought was really good. Uh, this is by blah, 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 uh, Alex Koch, Alex Koch. 
He said, Beto got 40, 430000 from individuals in oil and gas. Should we care? A distinction, individuals. He didn't take corporate PAC money, which, you know, is a step in the right direction. So Alex writes, it all started with one Sunday morning tweet from an investigative reporter, David Sirota. On December 2nd, Sirota was browsing through OpenSecrets.org, the most popular website for campaign finance data. On its oil and gas page, Sirota found something that surprised him. Out of all federal candidates in the 2018 election cycle, uh, Texas representative and candidate for Senate, O'Rourke, had the second highest total of donations linked to the oil and gas industry. Uh, Blah, 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 blah. So the tweet set off an online firestorm that lasted all week. Um... Um, I'm a money and politics reporter, and I got involved in some rather regrettable Twitter battles involving the tweet, but I also took it upon myself to dig a bit deeper. Based on detailed campaign finance data provided to me by the Center for Responsive Politics, the organization that operates Open Secrets website, I found that of the 430000 that O'Rourke's Senate campaign received from individuals from the oil and gas industry, 75% has come in the form of large donations over $200. Well, that doesn't really match the rhetoric or the narrative that Beto was simply a small dollar fundraising machine or that he isn't taking money from fossil fuel companies. 75% came from large donations over $200 in the oil and gas industry. The donors include more than two dozen oil and gas executives. I wouldn't classify oil and gas executives as small dollar donors. Uh, Would you? Uh, More than 30 donations were the maximum allowed amount of 2,700. So I can't do math, but 2,700 times 30, that's not chump change. Uh, But the Texas representative also took in tons of small donations of $200 and under. I also found O'Rourke broke the no fossil fuel money pledge, a commitment to reject campaign donations over $200 $200 from fossil fuel packs and executives that was endorsed by 16 environmental groups, which he signed. This piece is an accounting and contextualization of the numbers behind O'Rourke. So great reporting uh, by Alex over there.